Warning, the following content may contain spoilers for film and television programs. It is also intended for mature audiences. Viewer and listener discretion is advised. Are we ready, gentlemen? Yep, so ready. No. Would it be weird if I took my shoes off? Go for it. Okay. I'm glad shoes was the article of clothing. Yeah. Would it be weird if I just took my underwear off? <laughs> Would it be weird if I took my jock my jock strap off? Is it all right if I real? take my underwear off? Don't worry, I won't get naked. That's magic. No, they're snap-off underwear. Ah, oh, I got you. You got a Velcro down the back. So you're ready to party. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to those like onesie pajamas from like back in the 1800s that like had the ass flap, you know? Right. For like the yeah, those are great. Like, um, I what are those called? I just call them onesies with the ass flap. I think they're long johns with an ass flap. Long johns. There we go. That's what I was looking for. Is it really long johns? I thought long john Which is also was also a kind of donut. It is. What's your favorite donut? Um. Oh. Oh dear. Ooh. I'll go oh, the chocolate my. glazed. Ah, so you're just right, a that's super not vanilla. Like, not like chocolate glaze, like a chocolate donut with like the glaze on top of it. I see. Yeah. Okay. The with icing. I think I have to go for the old standby, just the this pink with sprinkles on it. Pink sprinkles? Yeah. Also like bear claws. Jareth? I don't know, the ones with the custard. You know? The ones with custard in the middle. Or caramel, jelly. Caramel bear claw with Bavarian cream. Oh, mm. there it is. That's Dude, one. You can't go wrong with a bear claw. No, I love bear claws. Like, you can try. What was the, what's the place downtown next to Harbell's? Hertz Donuts? Hertz Donuts. They have some incredible. Yeah. I can, I'm, I'm actually, still pretty sure it's a joke. I'm afraid to go in there. I'm no, actually I've been in there. pretty sure. Like, I've been trying to find a bad donut there. It's impossible. They have I have a, yet to do that. They have a blueberry bear claw, which I'm, like will change your life. I'm afraid anytime like everyone else is like, yeah, you should totally go. I'm afraid that if I go in there, I'm just going to get punched like it was a trick this whole time. There's, <laughs> just, one, there's just one guy standing in there completely empty. Yeah. Surprise, Surprise, waiting Jonah. for me. Surprise, motherfucker. Yeah, exactly. Dokes is inside. He's waiting for you. And by the way, I'm leaving all this in right here. This is all going on the podcast. Matter. So yeah. It's because yeah. this episode is going to be so shitty yeah. Yeah. that we have to have some silver lining. This so, is as good as it gets. It's seriously. So ahoy to yeah. all of you flick freaks out there. What is going Going on. Welcome to episode 55 of the Flick Freak Podcast, the number one podcast that's named Flick Freaks. Joined by all my great hosts today, we have the wrong half of Hollywood, Jareth Mooneyham. <laughs> I forgot. I'm not going to acknowledge that. You have you've been gone for a while, Brian. Yeah, but I was part of that episode where he was donned. Yes, and then he Dub? was gone the, the episode I was here. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that speaking right now is the king of the doldrums, who's actually been in a very cheery yeah, mood the last few times jovial. I've talked. So that's Brian Vaughn, and last but not least, we have the radish ravenator, Michael Boykin. I sound like a Decepticon. Oh, sweet. Guys, I am apologizing to not only my cohorts today, but also to the audience who is listening. Fair warning, this is going to be one of the shittiest podcasts we've no, ever recorded. This is News-wise... Get your hopes up, everyone. Because <laughs> we are going to be so just bitter yeah. about everything this that is, happens. This is going to be just a testament to what we can do with weak material. Yeah, yeah, because everything on this Which list is, is either not great news or it's just flat out fucking boring. Because yep. we scraped the bottom of the barrel trying to find stuff to talk about because nothing happened in the past week. Nothing happened. Well, it's yeah. got to happen sometime, right? Yeah, we've had dead episodes before, and they didn't run that long. Well, I take that back. Actually, the ones that have nothing, to, that's where we just start ranting, and yeah, they end up being the longer episodes. Yeah. So let's start off with actually trying to be on track a little bit. The, the Did You See That Opinion of the Week is the new Netflix, their first original film, Beasts of No Nation. The answer to your question is no, I did not see that. So I am the only one who saw it? No, I, I saw it. You saw it. Okay. Yeah. Well, give me your first impressions real quick. What do you think? I have to follow up on on before when I was like, wow, what an interesting choice for Netflix's first movie. Yes. Fuck! Uh, yeah. This is like... Uh, Dark as dicks. <sighs> <laughs> what kind of yeah. dicks have you been... Uh, uh, <laughs> I... The darkness. 
I mean, the Does the that tra- dick the tra- believe in a thing called love. The, <laughs> the trailer gives you a good idea of what to expect. Very much so. Um, but even even that, you you don't quite get the the scope of this movie. This movie goes from zero to ten, and then back down to zero. And you are just if you don't if you aren't feeling a little bit empty and um, wrecked by the end of this movie, you're probably not human. Yeah, seriously. I felt like this movie was a mixture of like the environment of Blood Diamond, while at the same time having just the hopelessness and just disparity of the road. Like, yeah, n- this it's it's a movie where nothing good happens. There's no redemption. There's no like. Oh man, it's all going to turn around for these no. people. Nope, it's just heartbreaking from credits to credits. So yeah. basically, it's Welcome to Africa, the movie. <laughs> Welcome to the shitty, awful part of humanity. Instead, yeah, of- it's it's where many movies are are kind of a journey down a, a road. This is kind of like being roped to the back of a truck and and dragged through a field of broken glass or lost in the bad side of town where your car is broken down. Yeah. There, but there aren't cars really. There's a few cars. There were so here's there were not, many not, cars and most of them blew up. Yeah, a lot of <laughs> blowing up. So just a quick synopsis for people who don't know what this movie's about. Netflix's first original film, it stars Idris Elba who does a remarkable job in this movie. Yeah. But he's actually a supporting actor in the movie. It's all about this little boy He's probably about eight, nine, somewhere around there. Yeah, ten maybe. Ten maybe. Yeah. He his name is Agu, and he um he's from this small village in Africa. His father is a former teacher, and they live in this. I guess it's a camped community where like refugees from other areas come to this part of uh where they all live to find refuge from like freedom fighters and from the government who just kills people willy nilly. So one day the military, the government, it's the government military, right? Can right. I, can I just say willy nilly is a weird thing to attach to that? It sounds so whimsical, but you're like, yeah, yeah. they just kill people willy nilly. Yeah. It sounds funner than it should. They do. <laughs> Though they, they kill him willy nilly. Like it's like Willy Wonka That's if he how- was a murderer. He kind yeah, of is. He, if you think about it, he tried to kill everybody in that movie. He yes, tried to he kill did. all those kids. Yeah, and he didn't really even yeah. feel anything. Yeah, but about he taught it. them lessons. <laughs> so did Jigsaw. Yeah, so did yeah. No, Jigsaw didn't teach anybody <laughs> a lesson. Jigsaw is the he modern taught, Willy Wonka. He taught people the importance of persevering until one has dug the key out of one's eye. Yes. <laughs> So, in this film, Beast of No Nation, uh, the government comes to the village one day and just kills everybody. Uh, Agu, the little boy, he escapes, and as he's, like, running through the bush trying to find just some place to hide, these quote-unquote freedom fighters burst out, and they kidnap him. And they pretty much enslave him immediately into being a child soldier for their militant purposes yeah sound like real stand-up folks no like from like the get-go like they catch him idris elba it is pops out and he's like starts smacking him over the head and he just immediately starts trying to brainwash this kid just like smacking that's over the, the thing i saved your life i saved your life i saved your life yeah that's and the thing about it was, don't slap people while you say enslavement that. enslavement is the correct term but um kind of being caught up in that those those events this is a, a kid who like uh by the way the the violence in this movie i thought was um very well portrayed if that makes any sense yeah. um there's um just as a side note uh like there's oh it's chilling there's a there's scene one scene where he he's it's this is his brother he's running away and this isn't a spoiler uh he's running away he hears gunshots he's running with his brother he turns around and sees his brother lying on the ground, and like hit the contents of his brain are just on the ground. You don't yeah. see it; you you just see the aftermath. Yeah, it's like the 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 violence in this movie is is so chillingly well executed. Yeah. Um, but sort of coming off of the heels of that, and being swept up with these rebels, it was like you're right with the enslavement, but it was also I I could almost get it. It was weirdly compelling. You could tell, like, as he was progressing, like, being trained and stuff, that he believed yeah. in what he was doing. He exactly. thought that, like, all oh, yeah, these he's people, being trained to believe. So. Yeah, like, he was brainwashed for, like, the Eater's Elba to be this 
godlike character. Like this man did save my life. He is training me to, to act out revenge yeah. for those who hurt my family. Yeah. And you could see like as a child actor, I think he did an amazing job. I th- th- this the acting in this movie was fucking incredible. I will say this: I don't know if it's technically going to be allowed to be up for like Oscar contenders because Netflix originals have been nominated for Oscars before. It's been their documentaries, but I don't know about like this is their first feature length film. If I wouldn't it, see hmm. why not because if it is, I could definitely see for sure Idris Elba getting a supporting actor nomination. Because I was thinking, have there really been that many incredible supporting actor roles this year? I think it's all been lead roles that have, like, stole performances. Like, you look at, like, uh, upcoming The Revenant, you're going to have DiCaprio, you're going to have Tom Hardy for uh, whatever gangster movie he's doing. I forget Legend or something? Legend, that's what it is. Where it hits him twice, so he's got twice the chance to win. (laughs) And then you have Johnny Depp for Black Mass. All these are lead roles, so I can't really think of a movie where the supporting actor was like the main focus. And also, the little boy who played Agu, I think he did a great job for a child actor. There needs to be like an award just for like child actors. This can was, actually yeah, do really. that has to be a separate category because I this mean, is uh, I, I I think the only other performance and it shares a similar name, um, Beasts of the Southern Wild. Um, mm-hmm. What's what's her name? Her, um, the little girl, the one who lived in the bathtub. Wallace, yeah, I believe uh, Qu- Qu- Quesanane. Or... I don't know if I said that right, but I said it very confidently. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, Quesanane Wallace. I, yeah. Yeah, whoever you want to say it. His his performance was at least on par with hers. Uh, yeah. But then again, but she gets more points because she was like six. I was trying to think. It's funny you mentioned Beasts of the Southern Wild, and it may just be the beast in both titles, but when yeah. I, after watching this movie, I'm like, man, that kid was a really good child actor. Kind of like the child actor from Beasts of the Southern Wild because I'm like, those are two performances. I'm like, the child actor stole the show. They have, um, I, I think it also helps they have similar motifs with the... Um, the kind of the the actor uh, narrating throughout. Um, it's not like constant. It's just like one sentence. Yeah. So in like, the bathtub, you could <laughs> yeah you could tell uh, it was abundantly clear that this this movie is based off of a novel though. Um, just just with the amount of um, just the density of the movie and the amount of scenes that were there just to build atmosphere or to explore a character and not to further the plot. You know, you don't, it's rare you see a movie like that that isn't based off of a novel. Yeah. Um, man, I, I, I have a lot to say about this movie, but they're all spoilers, so. Yeah, I will, I'll, I'll say this. You said earlier that this movie, it didn't, you were right to say that it doesn't uh, shy away from showing, and we're just clarification, the movie's an NR. It's yeah. not R, it's NR, it's not rated. So. Because Netflix doesn't really have an obligation there, does it? No, they don't have to. They're not trying to market towards the uh, theater crowd. Oh, yeah, you the movie is Netflix, in select theaters. You can watch it exactly. Yeah. So there is a scene. I'm not going to go into full detail about the scene, but Mike will know what scene I'm talking about. I'm, I'm just going to call it the machete scene. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. It is one of the most terrifying things to watch. Like, the what hel- what uh what assisted in that was the sound design yeah after that machete falls it it makes it feel like um an explosion just went off like yeah. you, it it's muffled it's uh, yeah uh, that's it, it it felt like I, I could feel the full gravity of what was what, happening. What is there. the uh, involvement of Danny Trejo in this scene? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. He's in the background. Okay. <laughs> just go just go looking away. menacing. He's, sit- he's sitting behind a bar. So you two, you've seen the trailer for this, correct? Yeah, with it, for this very podcast when we discussed yeah, it. Yeah, you so showed it to us. You yeah, know, you the, did this. You know the scene I'm talking about then, where Idris Elba is saying, like, kill this man, and yeah, he hands him a machete. I, I do have a memory of that. So it cuts off right before shit gets real and they don't shy away from showing you everything it gets to a point where it like pans away and you don't really see like how horrible yeah, it but really at that gets. point it's but like it's yeah exactly yeah. 
they they veer away so that they they uh, avoid being gratuitous. Yeah, basically. Um, yeah, because there's kind of a line there. Yeah, yeah, they they didn't want it to be. And uh, it's Kerry Fukunaga, the guy who gave his season one of True Detective. He directed and well, wrote the screenplay for this. Yeah. So um, we, good job we know, of that guy consistently yeah. putting out good work. Yeah, very much so. He was supposed to be giving us Stephen King's It remake, but I, he got fired. Which uh, I think he could have done an amazing job with that. Why did he get fired, did they say? Creator differences. He wanted a more authentic adaptation of the Stephen King novel. While I think it's Lionsgate wow. who owns the property, they wanted something that would sell tickets. Boo. Wow. That's like the that's the worst reason to, to see a guy leave a project. Well, whenever they say creative differences, I, that's what it boils down to. Creative yeah. differences as opposed to marketing purposes. Yeah. He's actually the one that got fucking Eyebrow Kid to play It. <laughs> so wow. Will Poulter, if the movie does get made, it who knows. But one last thing I will say about the movie is it is 100% gorgeous. Just the yeah. scenery around it, they like like their uh, setting, uh, like pan, panorams that they have are like, Oh my god, this is a beautiful country. And I think that's something yeah. interesting that they show you all this beauty mm-hmm. surrounded by so much hate. Yes. And I think this it yeah, was that's very well be done. Intentional, I would yeah. Have, yeah, absolutely. Um the uh I I think it was when Brian was on, uh we were talking about um soundtracks in movies. Great soundtrack. This is definitely one that I, I think Brian Brian would uh, definitely enjoy. I'd be in on this then. Um it's noticeable, but it's like you notice, like just because the music's so beautiful, you it kind of steals the moment in some parts. Yeah. But it's not like there were an awe, like I there don't were. Know how to explain it. It's were, subtle, but at the same time, it's like breathtaking. There are some very, very awful scenes that have absolutely no music, not even to build up tension leading up to the awful act. There's just no music. Um, Sometimes silence is all you need, though. Exactly. Yeah. This, yeah, using that's really important. You can't just constantly have a stream of. Before uh, before we move on, I want to put something to you guys. Um, sort of regarding the movie, it could it could be viewed as a spoiler, but um, so if if you know, skip ahead, I guess. But uh, I'm wondering what you guys consider to be a happy ending. Is a happy ending when things are better than when we started or is a happy ending when we leave with a positive note at all for me personally when uh when i think of happy ending for, throughout the uh the film the character the protagonist is obviously uh confronted with this obstacle he needs to overcome yeah if he's unable to that's not a happy ending if he's able to overcome it in some fashion then that's a happy ending okay yeah, what about you guys? Uh, mine is entirely, um, I guess, subjective. So yeah, but like completely so that if I if I leave a movie feeling feeling better, <laughs> I consider it a happy ending. Like, yeah, okay. So I mean, someone can fail immensely, but if there's like some glimmer of hope, or hope is probably the key word, actually. Yeah. Maybe not uh, attaining something, but leaving with some sense of hope. Yeah, like like all this bad stuff happened, but then like you know he gets like a letter from his father at the end, or like he gets the girl, or so yeah. or some yeah. some some chance <laughs> so, that things will get better. So so Schindler's List, um, you know that's <laughs> that's well that's like every, everyone's seen that movie. Um, yeah. awful, years and years ago, awful but things yeah. happen throughout that movie. Uh, but because of the sort of hope that we've discovered throughout, you know, is that is this a happy ending or or are we? I think it's totally depending on just how you feel. Yeah. Goodbye, Jews. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Jews. <laughs> it's it's really determined by the movie in particular and the events. Because I mean, if you yeah, most if you crawl are, through glass true. the whole yeah. time, and then at the <laughs> end, there's like. Some glimmer of hope. You're like, eh. yeah. I'll give you two examples of movies that do not have happy endings for me, and they both came out the same year, and they're both two of my favorite movies. There will be blood and No Country for Old Men. Both of those movies yeah. did not have happy no. endings. No, no, correct, not at all. Remarkable they both had endings. Great 
and happy endings. Okay. Everybody okay. was happy. We have to make that clarification. There's a difference between a great ending and a happy ending. Oh, oh yeah. of course. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, I think well, that's certainly opinion, but they are not mutually exclusive. Basically, that is not opinion. That is fact. shut your fucking mouth. So well, okay, for me, I'll, I'll give you an example. Uh, uh, Waterworld. Uh, everyone has seen all of Breaking Bad. That is yeah. correct. Okay, so when Jesse is driving away, yelling in jubilation or like <laughs> just aggression, I felt really good about that, despite the fact that everyone he knows is dead. Yeah, yeah. and he is forever psychologically damaged. Yeah. But I came out of that <laughs> feeling pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I was just glad to see Walter White die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. same here. Sorry, spoilers for Breaking Oops. Bad, but no, uh, he was my favorite character. That's great. Oh, yeah, yeah, he was my favorite character. I didn't too, want him but... to die. I was so I, ready for I really didn't. I knew he was going to. Like from episode one pilot, I knew there was only one way the uh, show could wrap up. That was actually a really genius move, giving him cancer too. So like the whole time, I think the general idea is everyone mm-hmm. didn't. No one went in with the expectation. Yeah, he was he gonna make it. No yeah. matter how he comes out of this, that he's going to die. Fantastic. Uh, yeah. Uh, way to approach that that is a yeah that's a really good point but he's he's also my favorite type of protagonist i mean he's kind of bald? the antagonist yeah bald and with a goatee okay uh, mustachioed no um he's unredeemable after a certain point there 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 isn't some claw back to greatness or some claw back to righteousness he's just bad after a while. Yeah. I think for me, I didn't want him to be redeemed. I just wanted him to accomplish what he originally set out to do, and that was to take care of his children. You're, that was the main reason he why he did everything he did, and it took him until the last episode to do that, and I know we're totally spoiling Breaking Bad, but the show's well, been over for Come three on. years now. So. Yeah, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say that it took him that long, because honestly, like after for the first season... He'd already accomplished that. He had several hundred thousand yeah. in the bank. He was he, done. He was done very early on. He kept okay. justifying it that way, but yeah. the truth was something really. Basically, different. you were on board with Walt. You like that dude had drive, and you were like yeah. in for it. There, I loved him, but that's but. the problem: is he always had drive, but that had died in him over the years. And the fact that he found something where he was like, "I'm better at everyone." Or, yeah, I'm better at this than everyone else. Now I'm a shitty high and school teacher, would, and now I would like to take this as far as I can take it. And that was uh, ultimate, and like what he admitted to Skyler at the end, you know, like no, this was totally for me at a certain point. Yeah, I love that too. Where yeah. she's like, "Don't you dare say that you did this for and us." He's, he's like, no, "No, I I did it for me." You're taller than I am, and uh, <laughs> and I did this for myself. <laughs> I loved how much I hated Skyler. Yeah. Uh, so ch- I guess we can actually still loop this back around to Beast of No Nation. Uh, Why not try? J- just to cl- just to tie it off, so we can move on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Walter White's journey to irredeemability is a parallel to this to Agus in in mm. in Beast of No Nation. Yeah, be- and it is as unsettling as it sounds, watching a 10 year old become unredeemable, would become a beast watching of a, no nation, watching a, an innocent 10 year old become Walter white. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the go. one who knocks. Yeah. He, yeah. So for me personally, I would put beast of no nation at number four on my movies I've seen this year. Yeah. So very, very good movie. If you have Netflix, it definitely needs to be in your queue to go and watch guys. Are you ready to start one of the shittiest top yeah, 10 news no, segments ready. ever? Woo! Yes, so, ready is the word I'd use. Let's give another just clarification. We are going to be bitter about 99% of the stuff on this list. Which is fine. Maybe 100. We'll still try and make it entertaining, but we're just not going to be happy about a lot of this <laughs> stuff. But we can't talk about one thing that is actually going to make some of us happy. In four days, October 21st, we have Back to the Future Day. Oh, my God. Yay. Doesn't Yay. it say Bach to the Future Day? It's an A. No, like that's not the composer. letter in question. Oh, motherfucker. Wow. See, I thought it was See, something about... Back to the Future. I was confused. I was like, what the hell is this? Let's get back to the future. That'd be a... That's a fantastic pun if you could just find the right context for it. Yeah. Yeah. We should work on that. Yeah. Or we send 
Bach back a hundred years, then no. forward two hundred years. Not the right context. No. Where we're going, we don't need roads. So yes, the well, reason we're bringing it up is obviously it will have come and gone by the next podcast. And Brian, I promised you we were going to talk baseball on today's podcast. Now we're going to bring up my own personal traumas. So okay. the Cardinals are out, but. Yeah. Yep. Actually, yep. it's a good thing that the Cardinals are out. It is not. Because um, now that the Cubs can go to the World Series and make the Back to the Future 2 prediction come uh, true. Uh, Maybe uh, everybody will just but, let but it happen. 30 years in the making that I this... I that it rings false because... The Marlins? Without any Miami to oppose the Cubs at Davis. It's impossible World. for them to both be in the World Series, isn't exactly. it? Exactly, so the Cardinals should have just won that series anyway. <laughs> But they did not, and I took uh, time off work and got irrationally drunk for no reason at all. So, Is you, there, do you, you need a Brian. reason? No, I really don't. You pulled a Brian. Yeah, I did. To all those listening, he is wearing Cardinals clothing right now. Yeah, he no, is. that's not stopping. I'm not. I'm not reversing course after thirty years of this, like some sort of. No, asshole. I'm. Just, I'm just giving them an yeah. idea of your, uh, your dedication. So, Brian. No, I. I am legit. As you know. I'm not a fan of baseball, and I do not follow it. Right. So, here's my question. Are the Cubs in the World Series, or do they have no. to play another team they are in, in postseason the, to make it to the World Series? They are in the National League Championship Series, which, for for your football understanding, would be NFC like the, Championship, yes, AFC that Championship. Exact thing. So, yeah. Okay. So, uh, if they win this series against the Mets, which starts tonight... Uh, they will advance to the World Series. Are the Toronto Blue Jays still in the running? Yes, it is. they are playing the Royals. I am rooting for the Blue Jays heavily. So, is it because you're since you're a Cardinals fan, I you can't root for the Royals? I have a distaste for the Royals. I um, figure, who do you hate more, the Royals or the Cubs? Uh, the Royals. Really? Uh, even with the Cubs being a division rival. Uh, the Royals have an annoying team that's not fun for me to watch, much as the Cardinals have an annoying team that would not be much fun for Royals fans to watch. Yeah. So. Um, so yeah, they're kind of aggravating and, uh, I don't like all of the out of the woodwork Royals fans that appeared the last two years. I have several friends that are legitimate, uh, long-term Royals fans. I'm very happy for them. I am not happy for everyone else who just happens to live in Kansas city or think it is their right to do that. I don't know. Yeah. Go blue Jays. Do, can, do you want me to sing? Oh, Canada now. Okay. No. Please yeah, that's don't. What I feel I feel like that's the next logical Please progression. Don't. Okay. Don't won't do, do it. that then. Oh, I forgot that's a sensitive subject for Jareth, who was once a resident of Canada. Were you born in are you Canadian or did you just live no, in No, he was born I on lived, the moon, actually. Born on the moon. Yes. Well, in a magical kingdom that you get to through the moon, mm-hmm. but yes. So, yeah. were you born in Canada? No, I was you born just, in Oklahoma. So, you were born in Oklahoma, you just lived in Canada? Tomato, for tomato. Where at in Canada did you live? Uh, Montreal, Quebec. Oh, practice France. Yeah, practice <laughs> France. All right, so um, I went practice to... Practice France. <laughs> I went to Toronto once. Beautiful city, not going to lie. Very different thing. Very. I know it's very different from Montreal, Quebec. <laughs> it's practice US. So, yeah. You know, well, Surprisingly, despite everyone being in practice France, it was still very much like practice U.S. Yeah. It was like U.S. and training diapers. So is how's the poutine in Montreal? Is oh, that great? my God. It's amazing. Is it really? Where I can one poutine get poutine here? I don't know. There, I tried making it. I it think actually Casper's downtown, the chili place. Oh, yeah. I think they, they sell that? poutine. I That's think they crazy. do. Where is it? I want its address. It's a uh, downtown. It's on uh, Chestnut. Is I have driven past it like uh, several. Isn't times. it further downtown than Chestnut? This is so stimulating. Yeah, for it is. Who don't live in. Yeah, no one gives a shit about. Well, oh, fuck it. You know, I, Rooster I feel Teeth. like it's uh, if you turn right on to um, if you go down Campbell. What's the road that intersects Campbell right before you get to McDaniel? Yeah, McDaniel. Been... Yeah, if you if you if you're on McDaniel, is it not, it's not McDaniel because McDaniel's where uh, Springfield Bruco is. I've been five years out from my, getting my poutine fix, and I need it. I want it. That's like <laughs> if the any one of you thing ladies out there have any poutine to give Jared, <laughs> we oh. you need some poutine tang. Uh, it's possible he'll accept. Do you, do you kiss your mother with that mouth if he's awake? So and yes, he does. Let's get 
Back to the news now. Any last things you want to say about the Cubs? Do you watch Not any whatsoever. of it on? Whatsoever. Do you watch any of it on Fox? I am. Requ- I have. Hey, <laughs> Jareth sneaking in for the win. Contrary to rumors, the rights to Fantastic Four will indeed remain with Fox. You need to do some backstory here. Okay, so there was a this- really awesome Michael J. Fox thing we could have done. <laughs> Did anyone realize that? Oh my With yeah. the Back to the Future? Yeah, we could yeah. have done Yeah. It was kind of there, but I don't after know how we would have... I, after I started this, I realized it, but I was I did too, sold. right after you started it. Right. I didn't know... Yeah. Let's let's just... It's good enough we're going to redo it. Jareth, take it away. So yeah, Back to the Future Day. I'm very excited about that coming up. No, I'm going to let Brian do it. Michael J. Fox was amazing as Marty McFly. Why, why are you doing it? <laughs> I'm setting... It. Did you not fucking listen where we went back... <laughs> Oh God! Fucking damn it! I don't Jeff, have, leave all this in. Leave contrary, all this in. I don't have one point twenty one gigawatts of power to dedicate to this you time son travel. Of a fuck, Jesus you've Christ. ruined it. Okay, oh. so actually, to tie in uh, the backstory that Mike asked for, uh huh. So it's actually going to tie into number three on our news segment. Okay. So yeah. I'll just go ahead and mention it. Fox yeah. announced there was going to be two television shows set in the X-Men universe. Now, Fox only owned the X-Men rights for film. Their yes. network syndicate did not have the rights to use Fantastic Four. I mean, to use X-Men. Right. So they were asking Marvel if they would be able to purchase those rights. And there was a rumor going around that the deal they made for letting Fox use X-Men for a TV syndicate was that they would get the Fantastic Four rights back for the films. Turns out, not true, and they still gave X-Men rights to Fox for TV. Yeah. So. So, uh, I don't know. I I mean, yeah, I'm glad Fantastic Four is not getting rebooted again. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's been dead to me since the original comics. (laughs) <laughs> the, yeah, the original comics, oh, not that God. great. Think about it. Mr. They've always been my least favorite. That's, Mr. Heroes. Fantastic has like the worst s- superpower of all time. Stretch Armstrong. No. <laughs> yeah. uh, the Human Torch can light himself on fire. Motherfucker, I can do that. That's great. <laughs> Only if he <laughs> hugs to, people yeah. all the time. <laughs> uh, His yeah. power is dangerous hugs. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I'm excited that they'll be in the X-Men universe. That's... That needs to be fleshed out, so let's do it. Yeah. Well, they're not going to be in the X Men universe. They're just going to keep the rights. Yeah. So. Don't don't worry about Fox doing it right. No. If Fox does one thing is right, it's the X Men movies. Yeah. Well, a portion of them. If Fox we will does not speak one of X Men right. Origins or X Men Three. If Fox does one thing right, it's ruin things. Yes. Or cancel things way before their time. Yes. All right. So number four. Number four on this list is actually very, very important. So video game voice actors may possibly be going on strike if several demands for their union are not met. Of uh, This is something I, I, I fully endorse. Like, that's yes. fantastic because uh, they are... It's, it's, it's bullshit that Scarlett Johansson could come on to a movie or video game and voice a role and get paid an actor's salary. And Nolan North can can do a performance in, in Uncharted and get paid. To be nothing. fair, though, Nolan North does like 400 video games a year. But he we're also to. talking yeah. about a supply and demand situation here. Like, I mean, um, a, a casual uh, gamer or someone that doesn't know anything about it might be like, oh, Scarlett Johansson, and then uh, purchase a game What for that reason. Um, I am having difficulty, despite myself, Giving a shit because everyone makes more money than I do. <laughs> See, <laughs> fair, yeah, enough. fair I, enough. I get that. <laughs> yes. the The problem is, is that I voice a, a video game right now for like eight ball eight. Dude, eight I totally dollars. will ah! too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't want to do sound effects. I just want to. Do I am a guy with a gun. Jareth and I will do it right now. Yeah. See. Look how good that was. Somebody program a video game and use all of this dialogue. Yeah. So yeah, we're gonna have like. If they if they do go on strike, we're not going to have Nolan North, Troy Baker, or Steve Dowd for video games. It takes five years. Do to make any a video of game. these guys voice Yoshi? 
<laughs> no, that's actually all right. I'm good. That's actually Jareth is the voice of Yoshi. And I'm not going on strike. I ain't wait. I ain't no, no scab. That okay, means so that I would be going on. Strike. I'll give you. Yeah. Here's just a few things of why the uh, sh- or it's the SAG AFTA. Yeah. I think it's SAG AFTA is the uh, the union that they're a part of. Mm-hmm. So here are some of the demands that they're asking for. If a video game unit sells over two million copies. Yeah. Then they were to receive a small royalty from every copy after two million. They would take a cut at the beginning of the game, like a cut on their original salary in advance of a possible royalty later on down the line. I'm fine with them getting as many royalties as they want. The other thing they were asking for, and I think this one makes the most sense, they want a stunt coordinator on set for every single time they have to do the motion capture for uh, video games. Like Nolan North, whenever he does the motion capture for Uncharted, he does not have a stunt coordinator there. Wow. Yeah. That's surprising. So they don't have a stunt coordinator on set for those. So that's one of the demands that they're making. Wow. You know what? As as far as I'm concerned with all this being as it is, I'm in support of anything that legitimizes video games as a media and as an art form. And with as many games as I've played with really shitty just voice acting and shitty voice acting from big name actors, even looking yeah. at you, Destiny. Oh, the new Destiny. No, Peter Dinklage. Yeah, Peter, that's that's yeah. old Destiny now. Well, uh, yeah, because they had to cut at it you, out. Comma Destiny. Oh, oh, they did. Oh, I thought you said. Us. I thought you said looking at new Destiny. No. I'm like new Destiny is no one north, which I still haven't heard because I haven't played. Destiny in like four months. Yeah. Good. Don't ever play it again. <laughs> yeah. I, I, everybody's saying that the uh, the Fallen King is like incredible, but that it's the game we should have got to begin with, but you have to pay for it again. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have to pay for it again, or is it just yeah. if you got the season pass, is it included in that? It's you, not included in that. Nope. Oh, then fuck it. I'm not getting it. Yeah. 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 All so right. They can. <laughs> Jared's just mimed baking a loaf of bread and looking at the ceiling. No, I mimed ejaculating everywhere. All right. No, you really just did that. Speaking oh. of ejaculating everywhere, the Hulk will be in Thor Ragnarok. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow perfect. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. Obviously, you don't know a lot about Michael the Hulk. Michael killed yeah. Jareth. <laughs> Okay, buckets and buckets of green cum. <laughs> so, uh, okay, on track. We talked about this on the spoiler cast. We were talking about, um, here, we're going to go into the nerd zone, so Brian, feel free to take a bathroom break. That's fine. I actually um, have to leave in about 10 minutes. What the, the fuck? fuck? Dude, so if, what? <laughs> if you're not late, but, you yeah. leave early. But go ahead and continue your uh, digression. Fantastic. Um, I'll make the most of my 10 minutes by saying really mean things about whatever you say. Uh, so at the end of Age of Ultron, the Hulk is flying. Spoilers. Fuck yeah. you. Uh, the Hulk is flying away in a jet, and we're all real sad about it. Um, he's going to Hulk Town. No, we don't know where he's going. Uh, and we talked about it on the spoiler cast. What's going what's to gonna Asgard? Happen? Exactly. Uh, in the comics, he goes to space or some shit. Yeah, doesn't he have his own planet? Yeah. Is yep. that correct? Ooh, yeah. I just had an amazing fan theory hmm. for what Thor Ragnarok could be about. There was an animated film called Thor vs. Hulk. Yes. Where the Hulk pretty much destroys Asgard. Could that be their definition of uh, Ragnarok? That would be... Where Loki poisons the mind of Bruce Banner. He turns into the Hulk and he starts rage-facing all over... Sure Asgard. Take much. So the in the film, the Hulk is the villain. Yeah. Oh, that would be cool. That would be excellent. That'd be a make very that use, movie. I would be, go and see that. Movie. That'd be a very good use of all. Okay, of the but characters. how do we get Loki in on this? Because Loki, he's Loki's already still in alive. Asgard. He's the king of Asgard right now. Okay, is, is Odin dead? dead? Pretty sure. Pretty sure. I don't know. I don't think they ever they, flat no, out said they, Odin is dead. I they give you know. a pretty big winky. Eye. Bri- <laughs> Brian's like, I was drunk through the last half of all of those but movies. No, <laughs> I legit, the second Thor, I fell asleep <laughs> for about 45 minutes. And I, then I love, woke up and then Loki was really there. I don't know. Fuck see, it. See, I actually Shit. like Thor uh, Dark World. Or I, I think the Thor, if you could just take the Thor and the Captain America franchises 
and not have them, that would be, <laughs> for me, fine. I would be okay with that. Thor's my favorite part of the Avengers. It's his long hair. Yeah. <laughs> he is the most dreamy. I thought you Avengers. said Thor was your favorite Avengers. As well. I said he was really funny in, uh, in Age of Ultron. He was. He was very funny. Well... We'll have to get someone to play a sound clip where Brian says that Thor is unequivocally his favorite superhero ever. Hey, good yeah. luck with that. Um, <laughs> it's not like we have these things on backlog where we can go and check it the, out. Uh, <laughs> what was I going to say about Thor? I had that a he was funny. Yeah, he was, and that's my primary reason for watching superhero movies. Probably because what else am I going to get out of them? You know, sometimes life lessons. Yeah, I could watch a real movie though. No. <laughs> All right. If I don't learn a life lesson about flying through the air, it's not a life yeah. lesson at all. Yeah. Hmm. Before Brian leaves, I do want to talk about the next news item because I do know that you would be yes. very interested in this. So Wes Anderson has confirmed that his next movie will be a return to stop-motion comedy. For those of you who saw The Fantastic Mr. Fox, you know it's an incredible movie, and Wes yeah. Anderson is going back to that style of filmmaking. That's a cussing great movie. It is a cussing, I was gonna do it is a cussing awesome. great movie. That's awesome. Well done. Yes. You yeah, cuss me, uh, I cuss you. <laughs> I I, I want to say that The Fantastic Mr. Fox is one of his most um, rewatchable movies. Um, I but that's I don't know that I can say that, because actually all of his movies are very yeah. timeless. It's a, it's a very... Um, yeah, because they don't really specific, exist anywhere in particular. It's a no. selective style of filming, the way yeah. he does his movies. Yeah. You either love them or you hate them. But it's so very well suited to stop motion. Oh, yeah. So it's it's perfect, and I'm I'm really excited. I, th I figured uh, Fantastic Mr. Fox like would be a one-off. Yeah, so yeah. that's that's awesome. So he has said, or there is no synopsis or title for the movie yet. That's all he said, is that this, it's going to be stop motion. Hmm. So as long as it's not like an Alice in Wonderland remake or something, no. yeah, we don't need another one of those. No, there have no. been twelve already. Yeah, yeah. Um, all of them starred Johnny Depp. Sometimes <laughs> as Alice. <laughs> Most of the speaking time. of remakes, nobody asked yeah, for. This is a good topic for me to listen to uh, Jareth yell about. Prometheus sequel, Aliens: Paradise Lost, will star Mission Impossible Five. Rebecca Ferguson. She actually did a really good job in Mission Impossible Five, so she should steer clear of anything to do with this movie. And yet she's in it. Yeah. I'm Hopefully, she will realize the error of her ways and run. Run, 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 because Prometheus sucked a big fat one. Um, what's the information on Aliens Paradise Lost? Which it's, the it saying falls, it makes me mad. The the title? <laughs> yeah. It's it's a sequel to Prometheus, but still in the prequel series to Alien. Okay, so why did he choose this super annoying name? Does know. it have parallels to Paradise Lost? Does it Maybe. have parallels to Aliens? <laughs> what was which was the one movie he didn't direct? Yeah, <laughs> James Cameron did that one. But uh, okay, so uh, in Alien, the original one with Sigourney Weaver, the first one, they got a distress beacon and they went to that planet. Could yes. the fall here? Here's just a if theory. I wasn't drinking. I could tell you the actual string of numbers, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm so sure you uh, could. yeah. So they, they're going to check out the uh, distress signal. Could this be the planet that they send the distress signal from? And then that leads into Alien. Um, hopefully, but probably not, because... Hopefully not. Uh, <laughs> this is the second movie, I'm so surely opinions. if there's going to be that much of a tie-in it's probably going to wait until the third movie that he's definitely definitely going to do yeah unfortunately we can't it's going to be a trilogy everything's a trilogy yeah especially anything that sucks <laughs> yeah that's a good point i mean <laughs> how many good things are actually trilogies there are some really notable trilogies and they started the trilogy i'll tell phase, you so. i can think of Two, maybe three great trilogies right now. Out of the five hundred yeah. trilogies, right? That's are. that's kind of yeah. yeah. The point, yeah. There's so many original Star Wars trilogy, Indiana Jones trilogy. But you say you say Lord of the Rings and then Lord of the, the Hobbit. No, the Hobbit is oh. part trilogy. of the same trilogy, which is now a say, trilogy itself. Say Star Wars, and then I will tell you. Oh, the first three Star Wars. Yeah, yeah. 
the first trilogy. Because so now it's a uh, sex elegy. What would we what have is to six? Tack on like a million. Uh, yeah, what is that? I, what is called a sex elegy? I don't know. Sex-ilogy? Sex-ilogy. That sounds is way that funner than it is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was going to say uh, the Mighty Ducks series, but D3 sucked. <laughs> How do you go from winning the Olympics to not being able to beat a high school team? Good question. It's, uh, you'll have to ask uh, Emilio Estevez. Emilio! Emilio! Mighty Ducks. Is really well coordinated. Yeah. All right, stand script, guys. Come on. Uh, the Roxbury's. Okay. <laughs> Speaking of things, that, duck man. Speaking of things that should die hard. Every- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that done. was that was expertly done. Are, are you done. proud of yourself? <laughs> you should be a little bit because apple cider came out your nose. A prequel to the Die Hard franchise called Die Hard Year One is in the works, and it will not star Bruce Willis. Okay. Well, the alternative was that it starred Bruce Willis heavily CG. No. The first? No, no. The uh, alternative was to not make the fucking movie. The, the first other alternative was to star Joseph Gordon-Levitt from Looper. <laughs> <laughs> Guys. He did a good job. The first Die Hard movie is an origin story. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, yes. he's just a dude, and then he gets swept up with terrorists yeah. and fucks shit up. How do you... It's this if is you like go back oh my and God. he did this again before that, it takes away all the power of Die what Hard. What if this Die Hard Year One is a tie in between the Die Hard franchise and the Police Academy franchise? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Maybe this will just be training day. Like it'll just be like a, a kind of it'll be a cop movie about just regular police yeah. corruption instead of Ooh, like is super Carl terrorists. from Family Matters in this though? Probably. Like he was in the first Die Hard. I hope so. Yeah, so I, what if Die Hard Year 1 is a, a mashup between Die Hard and the shitbag Jack Black Michael Sarah comedy Year 1? <laughs> yes. That movie sucked a dick. But think about it, Police Academy yeah. tie in, you could have Bobcat Goldthwaite in there like yeah. nah, John McClane, oh my god, this is police work. <laughs> I think this has potential. Call the studios. Bobcat right. motherfucking Goldthwait. He made a movie uh, last year. It was a found footage film about Bigfoot. And I really <laughs> wanted to go and see it. I think it was called like Shallow Creek or something he like also, that. He um, also directed the now especially horrifying to watch. Uh, what is that movie called? This was better when I knew what I was going to say. Yeah, it usually is. The Robin Williams film... Um, in which his son commits suicide. He didn't do What Dreams May Come. No, that's not the name of it. Um, oh, his son didn't. It was his wife. So. Uh, the Passion of the Christ. Father of the Year or something like that. Oh, uh, World's World Greatest Hunting. Dad. World's Greatest Dad. Flubber. World's Greatest Dad. Jumanji. Okay. So that's the movie I'm where... Go with Flubber. <laughs> Dead no, po- Flubber. Aladdin, Dead Poet Society. Is it a newer film? <laughs> no, I just said the it's, name of it's it. It's World's Greatest Dad. Yeah, that's what oh. it's called. It's a, yeah, it's it's like a road five, trip. Six, seven, eight years old. Lee Daniels, The Butler. It's not... Okay. Like, you that can, movie sucks. You can just Happy keep, Feet. Yeah, you can just keep naming movies, yeah. but you're... <laughs> Shrink. You're gonna keep being wrong until you say world's greatest dad. Yeah, that's where you're... Man of the Year. Yeah. Night at the Museum. Nope, Has anyone ever seen one of those movies? I have. I saw the first one. Yeah. Oh man, that was I've a never mistake. Seen one, and I'm fine with it. So... I don't need to spend any nights at the museum. If I'm going to a museum, I'm gonna do it during business hours. Death to Smoochie. That movie, yeah. that movie wasn't even that bad. One hour photo. Speaking yeah. of that movie was great. Yeah, was speaking of Bradley Cooper, Bradley Cooper has joined forces <laughs> with Jennifer Lawrence to bring wage equality to actors and actresses. And I this think it's funny. That, I think it's funny that Jennifer Lawrence is doing this, considering she's the highest paid actress and in Hollywood. Any actress in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess she has a bigger voice as a result of that. Yeah, she so. could. But um, I think it's just funny that she's the one talking about this. I understand. I don't a get lot. paid enough. Yeah, I understand a lot less about this struggle than I do about the voice actor one, and I have way well, less. Are trouble. we not talking? I, I I don't know. Are we not talking like at a lower scale? Is this is this expanding to like? Um, Andrew and a lady are both. Uh, hired to be in a movie and uh andrew gets x amount of dollars and she gets uh, x amount of dollars in parentheses times 0.5 <laughs> uh, uh 
Like, oh, okay. You is see what I'm saying? Is this a gendered issue? Is that yes? What the, that's okay. what it that's is. That's probably. Yeah. There's but a yeah, issue. the there's a difficulty here because actors get paid different actor by actor. Yeah, that's, based that's on your where name. The line is weird, right? Yeah, I was really so confused by this. So it's a little bit harder. They're not necessarily yeah. being paid for the same job. They're being paid for their name. Yeah. Now that so that's being a big said, part of why an actor is paid. Yeah, uh, that it really is. Unfortunately. So think about this, like. We're bringing it back to the Avengers, or even just Iron Man, okay? Yeah. So you would have Gwyneth Paltrow making the same amount of money as Robert Downey Jr. But she's no, a supporting actress. No, because they're not doing the same exactly. job at all. One now, of them is the lead. So now the you, better question is this. Robert Downey Jr. makes $20 million to be the lead in a movie. Yeah. Um, Charlize Theron makes $12 million to be the lead in another movie. It's yeah, exactly With the same budget. It's not like you know where Mike and Jared both work at a pizza place. They're expected to make the same amount of money based on how long they've been there. So we both that's, make the same amount of money. Okay, so yeah, or how many times they poop on people's pizza? So do right. you think that Which you should make amount. the same? And I don't want to sound sexist, but do you think you should make the same amount of money or more than somebody that's working at like Pizza Hut or Domino's? We technically do. But do you think that I'm saying it's I'm saying like it's kind of the same job you're both making pizzas they're both acting but it's two different things. Yeah, I, I, I think, guess a better example would be do you think you should make the same amount of money some somebody it, that works at Taco Bell you both work in the food I'll tell you, I'll tell you what it it depends fully on how they are they are coming at this problem. Yeah. Because this problem is like if we're talking about wage equality then we're between actors and actresses, we're talking about the way actors and actr- actresses, the roles they tend to portray. Um, we're talking about, then we start looking at like, what's the amount of like female nudity that we saw uh, in movies last year compared to male nudity? Yeah, is a lot that less. Cause you pretty much only ever see a butt. Is that, is <laughs> that, is that something that we need to equal out? Like, like honestly, I think Brian, that they you should... laugh, but think about how many times you've been surprised to see a dick on screen. It's I not think, often. I think but that it they're going about this yeah, all wrong. It does happen. And you're like, whoa, what the fuck? A dick. They shouldn't make this about wage equality for uh for the genders for actors and actresses. They should make it about wage equality, period. Like, cause there's obviously it's a huge issue in America right now where men make more money than women for jobs. Yeah. So they should have made it that issue. Don't specify it to a certain group of people. Obviously, well, that's kind got, of their wheelhouse because so, they're both actors. I know. It's so hard to be like, oh, she made $15 million, but he made $20 million. Uh, yeah. I can't. Oh, yeah, that's why I was asking here. earlier if it was a lower scale thing. Like if, yeah. um, if here in Springfield someone's shooting an independent thing, but it's sanctioned through whatever, and yeah. one actress makes... Eight dollars an hour, and that no one, none of these people do anything by hour. Eight dollars an hour, and then the dude makes eleven dollars an hour. You know, is is that an issue? Or yeah, that's an issue. That's an issue. Yeah, yeah. I but mean, they all belong. Uh, if you're good, you belong to a guild, I guess. So, yeah, well, to some extent, if you're on screen, if you're on you're screen, you're in the, you're in the SAG Screen Actors Guild. You don't Period. have to be. No, yeah, you, you, you do. You are. You do. You do. Yes. You do. I feel like that's I've a hell of a, a union. I yes. feel like I've watched a lot of videos where the actresses in question are not part of the Screen Actors Guild. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, for your own Woo! personal. Okay. I don't it. you watch all of your movies for your own personal enjoyment? I <laughs> oh. Brian watches a lot of movies on Pornhub. Is what we're saying. They're in the. They've mag. got some really great films on there. They're great. in the. No, no, they're, they're <laughs> all not, timers. You know, they're not in the SAG. They're in the mag. They're in the okay. mattress actress guild. <laughs> is that real? Oh, it, it is rhymes. now oh. the mattress actress guild. This is oh. a good note for me to leave on. Actually, everyone, this is a good, uh, everyone, okay. high five. Everyone, high five. Yeah. That's Woo. just we're just yeah. high fiving. Everyone's just high fiving. We knew it was bro hugging out this way. <laughs> so yes, last thing I will say: there definitely needs to be in America in general wage equality, but I don't think that you should specify it to actors and actresses because that's easily the hardest one to define. Yeah, for sex it's kind of like saying there needs to be um, wage equality for men and women who work at. Furniture factory outlet. <laughs> well, there what? does. Well, there. Okay, there does, and it there does need to be wage equality for actors and actresses. But I'm saying, why 
why narrow it down? That's that's why what I'm asking. I'm not saying that the problem is there shouldn't be. And that's obviously not what I'm saying. What I'm asking yeah. is why for this specific thing, why not just branch out? There needs to be wage equality and for true. everyone. Only Sith deal in absolutes. <gasps> I agree. I'm very excited. Speaking of Sith... EA has announced that the season <laughs> passed for Star Wars Battlefront. God damn it, this one makes sense, Mike. Why did you have to... <laughs> EA has announced that the season pass for Star Wars Battlefront is going to be fifty fucking dollars. Yep. Holy shit! I would argue the Sith are a little bit more diverse than the Jedi. A Sith Jedi Lord kind of made that season pass. Yes, uh, and to respond to your your statement, Jareth, Jedi deal in eh. <laughs> exactly uh, absolute uh. Eh. absolute. <laughs> eh. Okay, uh, so, so yeah. do you expect to get a second game? Uh, fuck no yeah absolutely it's probably gonna be a couple of mac packs and that like Horse I'm, armor atat -AT armor <laughs> i'm i'm or tauntaun armor I, I played the beta and it was fun so i mean but, what, here's what i know i know that there's going to be like you know star fighters godspeed there's going to be like, you know, you can just go do starfighter combat. You can do vehicle combat. Um, there's going to be a lot of different modes. There's like only 10 maps. Um, so they're going to add a shitload of maps. But what if one of these DLCs involve bringing back Conquest? You know, like that. Or a campaign. <laughs> okay. Like these could be things that would be great DLCs that you'd want to pay 10, 15, 20 dollars for. But frankly, a campaign would be lackluster in the game. You would be paying 110 dollars for this game. Yeah. Right. The game that's, and the season. 110 yes. That's assuming if you got the season pass, which means if you bought all the DLCs independently of the season pass, you're probably going to be paying something more like 125, 150. I. So I view something like this the same way I view something on like Kickstarter. So so EA is saying, yeah, we're going to here's a season pass. You can get all our DLC, just pay $50. Okay, you need to you need to give me something. Like you need to give me a a, a compelling what do you plan. Yeah, what's a compelling uh a reason for me to to pay $50? Cuz a lot of Kickstarter games are like if you donate $50, we'll stroke you off in the bathroom <laughs> or um, we'll put your name in the game. Well, but the thing is with this um, this is kind of a, a a loophole. Technically, is that Star Wars Battlefront? Yeah, lots of people are going to pay this. Hell, if I had the money, I would. I'm not going to get the game. I'm not excited for it. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't blame you. Um, it's, it's what a what was it specifically about it that just no campaign. The lack Star of Wars, conquest. Star Wars is it. all story. So whenever you take that aspect of away, I I, I fail to see the um, the draw to it because I watched like gameplay footage of like the battle on Hoth, yeah. and I saw Luke Skywalker as a Jedi fighting Darth Vader on Hoth. I'm like, what the f what what <laughs> what why are you, why why are you doing this? And I can I can see that. Yeah. So that that kind of just ruined it for me, and the fact that I've heard it's insanely disproportionate to how even the teams are mm, like very. especially on hoth like the empire is like they win 99 they're gonna win the, the the rebels are at a huge disadvantage on hoth yeah yeah um on uh the other drop zone it's a lot more even but that's just like capture the flag basically with or king of the hill more or less it's so weird because the the beta offered a, a very um for me a very fun experience I feel like they nailed the atmosphere of Star Wars. Like, I have not seen anything. The sound design, especially. Just yeah. fucking nail the visuals and the sound design. Everybody says the sound design is, like, the best thing. Whenever you see an at, -AT like, stepping in the... <laughs> like, Dude, <laughs> flying, a, flying a TIE fighter, the noises just just pull me right back <gasps> to the Yeah, the, that, and then there's, like, the... the, the like the like thing that happens like I'm like what's making that sound I don't care it's fun well you know um, think about it that's what Star Wars what made that besides the great spe visual effects the sound in the original movies is what set it apart from a lot of other movies part of what destroyed the second trilogy is all CG instead of like really fun effects help um, me J.J. Abrams you're my only hope. yeah uh, fun fact a donkey on a skateboard is a TIE fighter <gasps> What? Um, that is my favorite fact. 
Yeah. <laughs> I'm um, just imagining that that roar, and I just see a donkey like trying to balance itself on a skateboard. How did they get it on the skateboard? No, it's not not literally. <laughs> oh, that's effectively oh. those those sound effects. Oh. Why did you just? Dis- you really, you just really disappointed me. I'm I was so really sorry. excited about okay, that. Okay, Jarrett's leaving. Bye, Jarrett. You just walk. No, Jarrett, come back. No, don't. I'm going over the balcony. You can't stop. Put the gun down, Jareth. I'm going to shoot myself while I fall. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you ever see the movie Magnolia? Uh, no. Steel Magnolias. No, okay, so at the beginning of Magnolia, they're talking about, uh, not serendipitous, but just insanely coincidental events. Okay. And um, there was a boy who uh, was trying to kill himself by jumping off of a building. Okay. And uh, he was going to do it wrong because as he jumped off, he noticed that there was a painter's scaffolding, like the safety net, you know, that in case a painter falls, they like get yeah. saved by the net. So he was falling. He's like, ah, oh, damn it. I'm not going to, I'm going to live. And like eight floors down, it was like on a giant skyscraper in New York. So as he's falling, like there's this elderly couple that's having this dispute and the wife tries to shoot the husband and uh, she misses and she shoots out the window just as the boy's <laughs> falling and shoots him and kills him. Wow. And you're like, and there's a narrator like talking about this whole thing as it's happening. He's like, there's a lot of coincidences that happen in the world, but not this. Surely not this. Wow. So well, um speaking of insanely coincidental serendipitous things. We have a um, Patreon campaign. You're listening to this podcast and we happen to have a Patreon campaign. If you head over to www.patreon.com forward slash flick freaks, you can donate as little as one dollar a month to help keep these shows going and to help make them better. Every single dollar that's put into the Patreon campaign gets put directly back into the channel because we are all going to make the channel better together. Trust us, we're not making any money off of this. Yes. Gentlemen, that's going to wrap it up. For the top 10 news segment, and I think it is time now to move on to trailer talk. We're going to keep going with this just god-awful shitty stuff. No great news items besides like maybe Back to the Future and Wes Anderson. Now it's time to move into a completely underwhelming week as far as trailers go. I didn't even react to any of these trailers because I was just so bored by them. I recorded my reaction. I'm like... I couldn't give two shits about this, so I just, like, never uploaded my reactions to it. I don't know. The first one could be good. Okay, yeah. The first one is the only, like, redeeming film, potentially. The first movie we're going to be talking about is Race, the life story of Jesse Owens. For those of you who don't know who Jesse Owens is, back in the 1940s, he was an African-American man who was incredibly fast. So fast that they said, hey... You're so fast, you should be a sprinter and long long jumper. It's long jump, right? Yeah. Yeah. A long jump in the Olympics. And he's like, okay, I'll do that. And it turns out that Hitler was not a fan of this because... Because the- Hitler's not a fan of anything that isn't Hitler. Yes. And uh, he said... No man in the world is as fast or as potentially great as someone from the Aryan nation. So Jesse Owens goes to So Jess or uh, so Jesse Owens heads to Berlin to compete in I believe it was the 1942 Olympics. I think that's when it was. Uh yeah. And he Oh, no no no, no 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 no. That was or 1940- I want to say like 1938. Oh, okay. So anyway, Jesse go Jesse Owens goes to Berlin for the Olympics, and he wonka stomps the living shit out of everybody at the Olympics, breaks yeah. every single record and everything he competed. That in. had to have been very uncomfortable to watch as a Nazi. Yes. So Hitler, or as your average American. So yeah. Hitler would not meet with Jesse Owens, which I'm sure Jesse Owens didn't mind. 1936 Olympics. 1936, thank you very much. But so, the shitty thing is when he got back home, he didn't even get to meet our president. Every single athlete that won a gold medal at the Olympics in 1936 got to meet the president. Yeah. Except Jesse Owens. It's it's a, it's actually a, a terribly compelling story 
because um, as an athlete, like if it was isolated completely from the social aspect, it's a completely one sided, like athletic tale. Jesse Owens fucking rocked it, and it, there was almost no contest. Um, but in in the social context, um, it becomes a, a very incredible circumstance. It kind of makes me wonder how, like, how hasn't this movie already been made? You know, like, I've wondered that for a long time because I've heard of Jesse Owens since I was a little kid. People talking about him and like how yeah, he's this the icon that pushed forward so many social changes just by how great he was. And I'm like, yeah, this definitely needs to be a movie. Why they waited so long, I'm sure there have been other movies, but I'm right there with you. This this needs to be a story that's told for the modern times. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, it the trailer, I don't know. I don't know. Looking at that trailer, I don't know. The Did it remind you of inspired. Unbroken? Uh, it reminded me of Invincible? No, Invictus. That's what it reminds oh, me of. Oh, Invictus? Yeah. The Matt Damon? Where is Matt Damon. Matt Damon. Damon. Matt Damon. It just looks like, well, that looks like a, a probably in real life, very compelling, um, turned into a movie, not so much. Yeah. So the next movie oh. we're going to be talking about, Ratchet and Clank the movie. Disclosure, I've never played Ratchet and Clank. Uh, I have. Okay, Secondary so. Secondary disclosure, I didn't care for Ratchet and Clank. All right, so. Mike and Jerth, as people who have played these games, what do you think about this trailer for the movie? Well, uh, um, I I don't know, man. Ratchet and Clank were really good games, but I played them when I was a lot younger. And they they kind of hold a uh, cult area of gaming right now. Like, there's there's a specific group of people who really love Ratchet and Clank. Who are adults? Yeah, um, just it had to had to have been something you grew up with. But this is this is absolutely a game for like or a, a movie. I'm sorry for for kids. Um, probably who have probably, probably never experienced Ratchet and Clank, which is which is fine. It looks and this is clearly a re- rebranding of the first game, like a, a re a redo of the first game. Uh, because there's the references to cell phones and things like that, which was not happening in the first game. Yeah, because um, it was like 1997. Yeah. So it's like 98. Man, and and like that's a game that um, I played that, and you know, around the time I was playing uh, Jack and Daxter, and um, a little before that, Banjo Kazooie. Um, there's just like those kind of fun games. Weird, weirdly, out of those three, Banjo Kazooie was the only one I cared for. Uh, and these, it was the least that was, like, obviously in my wheelhouse. Yeah. So they're, like, these platformer games that I remember playing and being like, man, th- these would work. These would work to a mass audience. But, like, these should be Saturday morning cartoons. Like, these should be... Yeah. These are good. So Ratchet and Clank, the movie, man, I feel like um, I was Like, maybe curious. they're 10 to 15 years too late. <laughs> well, um, look at, like, try Those to... Those games are that old? Yes. They came out when Final Fantasy VII did? No, they might be a little bit older than that. Oh, wow. wow. 2002, maybe, I would say. Okay, so like 13 years too late. Okay. Anyway. Um, Final Fantasy VII came out in 97, I think. So so, so th- think of uh, just like in a vacuum, just look at this trailer as someone who's never heard of, of PlayStation before. Like you, you'd probably be like, "Oh, my little brother would like this," or yeah. like my nephew or my my cousin, you know. Like, so I'm sure it'll work in theaters pretty well. But it's just, I, I guess I just kind of end up not. It just doesn't. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure about this one. Yeah, neither am I. Whenever I saw the trailer, I'm like, okay, this. Uh... Yeah, I, I find it hard to care. Well. Well, I know a trailer that we are all very uniform in our opinions about. Freaks. 2002, sorry. Is 2002. Came out. So the next movie yeah, but... we're going to be talking about is called Freaks of Nature. Oof, boy. Um, if you. Aliens versus vampires versus zombies versus humans. I'll wow, tell you let's just go ahead and grab all of the pop culture targets right now. I'll tell you what, if you're, feeling, if you're feeling really optimistic, if you're feeling full of hope and happiness, for for all that we've achieved is is human, achieving flight, landing on the moon. Watch this trailer. Then Drax them sclounced. <laughs> uh, because this is basically a combination of all of the most tired genres in all mediums 
combined together. Now, to some extent, they seem to be d- trying to, to pull the tongue-in-cheek thing, but they it's, they seem to be doing it in the worst way possible. Yeah, like, There's only one film I can think of that did that right, and that was Zombieland. I would yeah. argue that even Zombieland didn't do it right. I'd say Shaun of the Dead did it better. Well, I'm talking about because Shaun of the Dead was before that genre became so just in your face. Yeah. Back then, okay, zombies yeah. weren't the forefront. I think that Shaun of the Dead may have pushed this upon us. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, okay. I could see But that. no, to Andrew's point, I think Zombieland was one of the most like watchable movies of that of the time it came out. It, you was, know, it, it was definitely the least offensive. Yeah, the, the height of the zombie craze. So... Funny so, zombie movies. There's a difference between funny zombie movies and like just flat out trying to make a horror film. Well, it's not a very big gap, though. So, well, okay. I'm just saying. Just, just, but just to kind of hone in on this, we have Bob Odenkirk, yeah. uh, Keegan Michael Key, Patton Oswalt, Patton Oswalt, um, Vanessa Which? Hudgens, completely in a different category than the last three people I mentioned. Yeah. So, like. And then some other guy. Maybe this movie is actually going to be good. Uh, oh, Dennis Leary as well. Can't forget him. Dennis Leary. Thank you. That's yeah. the fourth person I wanted to actually mention. He's the one I trust most out of them. Oh, I trust Patton and Keegan more than most others. Maybe Bob, but I've seen Bob do some bad stuff. So And and you you said that this was maybe Kickstarter. I believe sure. this was a Kickstarter film. Or it was a it was a fan funded film. I'll say that you can I don't correct know if it was us in the comments. Indiegogo or one of those. Yeah, correct mm. us at the uh, we done fucked up section, which <laughs> we haven't gotten one of those lately, so we must not be fucking up. I take that as a win. Gold yeah. star for us. Yeah. So pat yourselves on the penises, guys. I don't want to have to spend any more time talking about this film than Thank I you. have to. So let's move on now to the next film on the list: The Boy. Weirdly, I would say that this is probably the... I'd rank this number two on this list of... uh, After Race? Yeah, Race and then The Boy. Looks like it might have some potential to at least give me one good jump scare. Yeah. So it stars Lauren Conan, or Cohen, who we know from The Walking Dead... Which she doesn't That's think. where I knew her from. I yeah. was like, where the fuck did I see her before? <laughs> no, yeah, she's in The Walking Dead. She's a uh, Maggie. Yeah. Yeah. But um, um, this movie's about this woman who's hired to house it for this old couple who they believe this porcelain doll who is terrifying as all get is their actual living son. So she's babysitting him, and they give her a list of rules like, don't cover his face. Make sure you feed him. Don't he, leave him alone. He's like and a fucking gremlin. He has this whole list of things you can't do, or otherwise he's going to fuck up your whole week. From yeah. the trailer, the furthest down the list that I saw was clean the traps. Yeah, clean the traps. Don't know what it means. So Kind of upsetting. So she doesn't do those things. She doesn't feed him. She covers his face and stuff. And then the doll kind of comes to life and pulls not quite a Chucky because you never actually see a movie. You just see, like, you'll look away and then he'll be in a different spot in the room whenever you look back. Which is way creepier. Yeah. Yeah. So this movie has potential to be scary, but at the same time it has the potential to fall flat on its face. I think think this trailer did a thing that a lot of, of like, horror films are trying to do now. Um... Okay, I I, sh- I should go back on that. So a lot of like horror movie, like the trailers seem to really be trying to freak you out. So I feel like the trailer for this movie really dropped all of its scares. You're probably right. And uh, none of them were scary. All of them were dumb. <laughs> Did either of you see the movie The Devil Inside? No. No. Okay. That's uh, one of the exorcism movies, right? Like, yes. Oh, we've got a camera. We're going to... Yeah. Oh, wait. Oh my god, I did, yes. Did it suck pretty bad? Yes. Well, William Brent Bell, the guy who directed that, directed this as well. So, so I saw it twice in theaters, actually. On so, accident. <laughs> accident. So what, I, what I'll say about this movie, um, Andrew, I'll see if you agree with me. In talking about it, it's actually like, man, this is a, actually a really spooky concept. It's a spooky concept, Execution wise, I don't know if they nailed it. I feel like uh, mm. if they got a different director, if M Night Shyamalan did this movie, mm. I feel like it would actually be really fucking scary. Like, like watch um, 
just watch the trailers for The Visit. I think as a director, Shyamalan does just horror really well. He's just a shitty writer. Um, That's probably true. So I feel like if, if, if we had a director that was more like him with the slow, very slow buildup and like the, 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 um, Lots of quiet, lots of silence, and then the Shama twist. Lots of lots of atmosphere. We don't need. It nothing. was really a boy trapped inside the doll the whole time. <gasps> no, I thought she it was, was, no, she was the, the doll. doll. That's what it's going to be. She is the doll. No, no, he's not writing this fucking movie. He's just directing. That's what. I'm, that's all I'm saying. Here, uh, with the, with what I saw of the trailer, the biggest flaw it had was showing any blatancy. Yeah. Like a uh, hand coming out of the, the painting or yeah. what it should do is ride the, the unsurety, just like be like, is something happening yeah. as long as it can until the very end? Yeah. And then the climax is a clusterfuck of something happening, whether it's a ghost or something else. There's a scene all in the tra- there's a scene in the trailer where I'm just going to call her Maggie because that's what I know her as. Yeah, yeah. So there's a scene where Maggie, she like chalks around, like she puts the doll on the ground. She ch- chalks an outline around it. And she's like, now let's leave the room. And when we come back, he'll be in a different spot. Why did she need to chalk it? I don't know. Just to like prove like, okay, see, he's gone. Yeah. If he really was moved, you wouldn't need chalk to fucking tell you that. No. Yeah. But, um, he's clearly not in that spot. So I think that if they played with it, like, um, if they went back in the room and he was still in the same spot and they just kept toying with you, like, is she just crazy or yeah. is this doll? But they made it really blatant. There is something up with the doll. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you need to ride that psychological aspect as hard as you can. Yeah. I would love to see Jareth's directorial debut of a horror film. I think you could Me do it. I think you could do a fantastic job with something like that. I agree. I really do think you would do something remarkable. But, uh, so, guys, crowdfund Jareth Mooneyham yep. directing a film. If, um, okay, if you could direct a horror film, do you have like concepts that you've come up with in your head of what you think would be a really good film? I probably have at one point, but I can't bring them to mind now. Okay. So, if, if I were to be crowdfunded to direct a film, I'd be obligated to do the best I could. Because <laughs> horror, horror is a really stale genre right now. It's... Horror, the horror genre of films tends to be better for the aspects of it that aren't horror than the aspects that are. So it's like, you know, okay, well, we're horror, but we're also like a thriller. So we're more of a thriller than we are a horror, you know? Yeah. It's, uh, it's a really sad fact. I think that if you're going to do a horror film, that has to be an indie film. Because if you like look at the big major films like this one, you're like, uh, yeah, that's not that great. But if you look like the small indie films like It Follows or The Babadook, then that's the, when you get into like some small films that are like, holy shit, that was fucking scary and it was great. It Follows looked good and wanted to see it. The Babadook is great, actually. Yeah. It's one of the best horror films I've seen in a long time. Yeah. That thing was fucking terrifying. Yeah, it was. Uh, I think I think we have like a really critical problem also in the way that horror films are being advertised. And what this falls into for me is um, if you've seen uh, the previews for Crimson Peak. Um, now, Guillermo del Toro, he's a big director that I think can do a great job with horror. Here's the problem. Have you, have you guys seen the trailers? Yes. No, I haven't. Okay. Yes. Um, the trailers for Crimson Peak are like, there's lots of whispering and scary and, and darkness. And here's the thing. You've already Gu- sold me off. Of Guillermo del Toro was like, nah, it's not a horror movie. It's, it's a gothic a- romance. Yeah, it's a gothic romance. It's... It's there's intrigue, uh, but it's not scary. From my experience, from having worked in a romance bookstore, gothic romance means horror with a weird love story. Yep, that's exactly, that's exactly what this, right. That's exactly what this is. But it's not. But it's not like a th- the the trailers are making it seem like it's a thriller. Like you're going to be yeah shitting your pants and and just disgusted and terrified. You know, like watch any horror movie trailer. That's what they yeah. want you to feel. Watch out for all the scaries. But it's like, not. I was going to go be, and see it tonight, but I'm not. I'm going to see Goosebumps. <laughs> That's probably a better choice. I don't know. I, th- this movie, I really did want to see this movie. As frightened as I do get in horror films, I do enjoy playing or watching them, but I think I enjoy playing horror games more. Absolutely. Because a horror game, you feel invested. It's you. You know what game's not scary? When? Selma. Yeah, no, it's not really. It's not a scary game. Yeah. The we most we startled- got five hours into that game, 
And shutting the door in the guy's face was about the scariest part of the whole game. I don't know. The scariest part to me was uh, Monster Dance Party when he got real fast all of a sudden. Oh, yeah. It was the he first strobing out in front of us. The first time that I was surprised by the actions of a monster. Yeah. I was like, dit, dit, dit. And I was like, he's super slow. I can back up. And then he's like, boom. And I'm like, oh. Yeah. He pulled a ring girl on us where he's oh, like no. standing in front of us. And then, boom, he's right in front of us. Yeah. So looking at them is bad. As you, yeah, it turns out if you just turn around and don't look at them, yeah. they can't hurt you. Yep. So yeah, we hid in a corner with him right there, and he's like, Grr. like he was like standing like right over. It's like I guess he's not going to turn around. Fuck it. <laughs> so the last trailer, as you can probably guess, we've been trying to just get away from talking about it, but we're just going to get out of the way. Lost in the Sun, Josh Duhamel's next movie, and the little boy in the movie, his name is Josh Wiggins. I thought he was in a, a movie called Mud. But he was not. He's in this other movie about a German shepherd named Max. <laughs> okay, that oh. sounds intriguing. Similar consonants. But he looks a lot like the little kid from the movie Mud, he which does. was a great movie. But uh, yeah, this movie, it's uh, Trey Nelson who wrote and directed it. He has done nothing. He's done TV episodes for shows like Red Rum, Brain Games, and Kelsey's Essentials. That's eclectic. Yes. Yeah. Which well, isn't necessarily bad. Wait, guys, he did six episodes of Inked. So. Well, okay. So. That. What? The tattoo show. Yeah, I know. But do you need a director for that, really? Yeah. Do you know what? Do you know that reality TV is, like, basically just the same as, like, Law and Order? It's, like, the same. Pretty much. It's a shot no. different. Uh, so weird. I was talking to, to Brian about this and I, I don't know if you guys were agreeing or not, but I thought that the trailer for this just did not fit the movie again, kind of in the same thing we were talking about with Crimson, Crimson Peak. Like this does not seem like a thriller. No, that's why it doesn't seem compelling as a trailer. It looks more like it might be like a character study, maybe like kind of following this man's trials and tribulations as opposed to. The one man's rise to forget his past. Yeah, like uh, a coming of age story tied with like a, a man's journey for redemption. Not not a thriller. <laughs> so for me, I understand what you were saying. Like maybe the trailer's just not doing the film justice. Yeah. But here's what I was thinking: the movie is based around the premise of this little boy whose mom dies, and then this man approaches the little kid, saying, "Hey, I know you're going to go live with your grandparents. They call me. They want." you to ride with me instead of riding the bus immediate, clear, immediate red flag yeah to be clear he doesn't look that little yeah he okay, looks he's old like enough 15, to, he's like 13 14 maybe 15 looks old enough to see through that ruse yeah he's like okay dude this is red flag should be going up you're gonna to try right. to fuck me aren't you it, it okay that's exactly <laughs> what i thought whenever i saw it so but it is set in a different time the question I want to know is, it looks like he was living in, like, Texas or something like that. Yes. What the fuck is he doing with skis? Did you notice that? Maybe when, it's When like, he was at the bus stop, he had skis. Well, he said it was a three-day trip, so... I don't know. By bus, at least. So, narrow that down to two days. That could be damn near anywhere. I guess that's very true. Maybe they're in South but Dakota or something. Maybe, here's... Yeah, I mean, South Dakota, the that's, Badlands. Okay. That, that makes sense. Okay, so... <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if I fucking nailed it? I'd love that. Yeah. Turns I will out never it's, I would never South shut Dakota. up. I don't know. Story that. of South Dakota bank robbers. That didn't sound that Okay, inspiring. so here's here's the thing with me. The crime that Josh Dumos committing isn't that like enticing for a viewer. He's yeah. not like a bank robber or like a psychopath. He knocks over gas stations. So for me personally, whenever I watch a movie like this, if the the th the shock value of that isn't great, then there better be some pretty fucking good performances. And I don't yeah. see that in this movie. No. Yeah, they're they're right. trying to sell us on. Look, he's robbing stuff in front of a kid. We've yeah. seen way worse done in front of kids. Yeah, <laughs> frequently. Exactly. We just watched Beast Television. of Donation, so we yeah. know how fucking brutal you can do. <laughs> well, but, but we don't need shock value. We just need we need just good. We just need it to be good. Yeah. And I was just so bored with this trailer. Yeah, and it so so point is if you don't have uh shock or if you don't have 
something, then you better have something else to back it up with. Yeah. And it's and I saw nothing doesn't. in the trailer. No. I'm not well, saying that it's not there. It's just it's not shown. They to didn't me show that, it to us. That's that's something important for people who make trailers. I mean, people get paid a lot of money to make this sort of thing. Yeah. To advertise for these things that make a lot of money. They're not actually trying to sell you on the good points of the movie they're trying to sell you the same movie they did last time so that you'll go see it with your date on friday they're trying to they're they're trying to to, in the world where kentucky fried chicken doesn't exist yeah i wish we could go back to those trailers we kind we are over and over. It's just the, they it's, they just twist it ever so slightly. You're talking about like the John LaFontaine trailers. Yeah, in a world. Yeah, I'm I'm all about those. I miss that guy. Rest yeah. in peace. Because I mean, they did the same thing with this, except for they just did it with text. Yeah. How far will one man go to forget his past? <laughs> I don't know, probably pretty far. We've seen a lot of movies about it. Yeah, where people did a lot of dumb stuff, gentlemen. Yep. Are you ready for the Fair Baron forecast? I am so ready. All right. So there are four major movies that are new in theaters this week that you can go and see. We've talked about two of them, sort of. Crimson Peak, Guillermo del Toro's newest movie. Then you have Goosebumps, the kind of kids horror films about the R.L. Stein books from our childhood. Honestly, it looked a little bit more like a comedy than a horror. Yeah, because Jack Black is playing R.L. Stein. I actually listened to a um a uh, interview on Nerdist mm-hmm. with Jack Black about this movie. He'd never read a uh, Goosebumps book. Oh, wow. So he's like, yeah, and then I met the guy, and I'm like, holy shit, this guy's awesome. So yeah, I would definitely do a movie with him. <laughs> it's uh, the same guy who directed... Uh, it's not Jack the Giant, but uh, Gulliver's Travels. That's the movie I'm thinking of. Oh, boy. So he did this one. So I'm going to go and see it tonight. I'm a little wary, but it's just it's goosebumps. So if I feel like a kid watching it, then it's accomplished what it set out to do. And if it's a little bit creepy, that was the thing about goosebumps. It was scary, but it wasn't so scary. It was like Stephen, Stephen King scary. Yeah. So it was kid scary. The third movie you can go and see in theaters, which everybody should go and see this movie, is Bridge of Spies. That have does you, look good. Have you guys seen anything about this? Okay. It's a play on words for Bridge of Size. No. So get this. With, uh, it Tom stars Hanks. Tom Hanks, directed by Steven Spielberg, written by the Coen brothers. Whoa. Yeah. It looks Set fantastic. Set in the uh, Cold War era. But yeah. it's called Bridge of Spies. Yes. So here's here's a quick synopsis for you. This is off of IMDb. In the Cold War, a lawyer, James B. Donovan, who is Tom Hanks, is recruited by the CIA and involved in an intense negotiation mission to release and exchange a CIA U-2 spy plane pilot who was shot down over Russia, while at the same time he's trying to... It's pretty much um, the Soviets have an American spy and the Americans have a Soviet spy during the Cold War. And he is advocating on behalf... For America, the Soviet soldier. Because he, the Soviet, He's trying to trade the two spies. He's trying to trade them. Now, American citizens, they don't know that the Soviets have one of our soldiers, so all they see is a man advocating for the release of a Soviet spy. They don't know why he's doing this. They think he's just a Soviet sympathizer. And in that era, that means hate, attacks, etc. on his family, not just exactly. him. Like, they're yeah. like... Throw like hitting his house and like shooting up stuff like that. So he's like, I I have wish I could tell you guys what's going on. Believe me, I'm right there with you, but I have to do this in order to stop two countries from going to war. Wow. It looks like an incredible movie. And right now, if anybody's curious, it has an 8.5 out of 10 on IMDb. That is not easy to get. No, an 8.5. Now, granted, there's only 2,000 votes. The movie just came out yesterday. But still, that's not anything to scoff at. An 8.5, that's how you get into the top 250 movies of all time. Yeah. If it keeps that score, that would put it somewhere around... The 80s or 90s. Yes. So obviously with a new movie, the numbers either most likely go down. But you know what? I could see the, with the the writing, the directing, and the acting potential in this movie, it could stay up there. Yeah. So the last movie that we will be discussing that's new in theaters right now is a movie called Woodlawn. It's um, a faith-based movie. 
Sort of uh, like how War Room was. It's about a gifted high school uh, football player and yeah. the obstacles he needs to overcome. Well, go see it with your church. Yeah. Yay. All right, that's going to wrap it up for the Fairburn forecast. There's other movies that are still obviously in theaters that you can go see, like The Walk, Sicario, The Martian, Pan, uh, Southpaw, stuff like that. A lot but of really good movies in theaters right now. Very, very much so. Sicario, great movie, if if you're into those kind of movies. The Walk was pretty good. I had really high hopes for The Walk. I was kind of disappointed by it. But uh, The Martian, number one movie of the year. Super duper good. Jareth, my good friend. Are you ready for IMDb Idiots? Kind of. All right, you're the host this week. Yep, get ready. For those of you who do not know what IMDb Idiots is, at the very end of our podcast, we play a little game where one of us, Jareth the host this week, he's going to list off facts about either a film, television show, or video game. We have to guess what specific media he is talking about. The first of us, us being Mike and myself, the first of us to three points wins. The only thing is you cannot tell us what year it came out because that makes it way too easy. Okay. So. So the first one is a film. Film. Okay. And it is directed by Jesse Vaughn. Is it V-A-U-G-H-N? Yes. J-E-S-S-E? Yes. Okay. Just got to make sure I get it all right. Jareth, is it Juana, man? Damn it, yes, Juana. I was like a second behind you. <laughs> okay. By the way, it is V-A-U-G-H-A-N. Oh, damn it. Sorry. I, I've already moved on to my next one to find it. Okay. So, I hey, I type in the same thing. Yeah. Can I use voice actors? Sure. Yeah. So, I'm assuming you're talking about a video game. I am. Okay. So let me just expand that name so I don't give you half of it. That's probably not going to work. <laughs> I, have a feeling, I have a feeling it's going to be like a Hayao Miyazaki or something like that. Even no, no, no. His uh, movies are great. It's a video game. Uh, voice actor Grant Kirkhope. Spelled like it sounds. Yep. Okay, I'm going to guess it's not the first one that popped up. Goldeneye. Nope. Damn it. Uh, Give me more. Uh, Okay, let me go back real quick so I can get a little bit more information. Uh, What other information is good to throw out on it? Uh, Director. Doesn't list a director, actually. Developer, possibly? Uh... There has to be. It was on in 64. Okay, then can I get another actor? Chris Seaver. It has to be Perfect Dark. It isn't. What the? Is it Viva Pinata? Nope. What is it? Wait, you're out now. I know I'm out, but we're we're both out. Well, no, you guessed twice. Oh, shit. So you can go now. I can go back in now. Shit. Uh, oh, you know what? Fuck it. I'm just going for it. Conquer? Nope. Shit. Okay, now we're both back in. Are we both back in? Yes. Okay. Um, don't say... Oh, Banjo-Kazooie. Yep. Fuck. Fun fact, he also composed the music for it. Wow, that is a fun fact. Okay. Let me... So, two nothing. Is this going to be a runaway win? Maybe. That didn't that didn't feel like a runaway. That I had to fi- <laughs> I had to fight for that one. Find a shutout. All right. Uh give me one second to grab a new thing real fast. Uh just went brain dead. Good. That's you have fine. An entire wall of media behind you if you need to think of something. Oh, is that weird? Give Andrew the uh advantage there if you do that. Which is not There's bad. There's a lot of movies and TV shows and games up there. <laughs> okay. Um, let me just make sure that this is good. All right. Uh, movie? Movie. Director is Roland Emmerich. Oh, God. <sighs> okay. Who's in it? Um, 
Or who wrote it? You can say who wrote it or who's in it. I'm going to go with actor Hank Azaria. Fuck it. It's Godzilla. <laughs> yeah, it's Godzilla. Wow. Damn. How did that you... movie sucks so hard. That's why I was laughing. When I as joked. soon as you said, I'm like, wait, who was? Oh, he was in Godzilla. God damn it. That movie sucks. Wow. Oh, well, shit. Now I have to pick another one. I mean, really, the only thing Roland Emmerich likes doing is blowing up New York. Yeah, that's pretty much Independence or 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 Washington D.C. Yeah. He likes to blow up both of those cities if they're up. recognizable American uh, monuments. He likes to blow them up. Yeah, he did Independence Day too. Yeah, yeah. damn it, I was just about to do Independence Day. <laughs> wow, I was like this close to do. So it. just just to do that while you're uh, searching for stuff, Independence Day, White House down. Uh, 2012, 10,000 BC, the day after tomorrow, the Patriot, Stone Godzilla. Wall. Stargate. Yeah, he did Stargate. Uh, Universal Soldier. Yeah, so just very... um, I feel like this guy really supports the Bush administration. I don't know... You cannot forget Eight-Legged Freaks. I did forget Eight-Legged Freaks. I'm sorry. Okie dokie. Next one is also a film directed by Peter Howitt. How's the last name spelled? H-O-W-I-T-T. Okay. He looks funny. Okay. I have an idea. Yeah, me too. Anything else, Jareth? It is also written by Peter Howitt. (sighs) I'm going to guess that it's Johnny English? No. Okay. You're wrong. <laughs> All right. Who's in it? There is an actor in it named Terry English. Sliding doors? Yep. All right. Not two, two. Damn. Now I have to pick another one. <laughs> God, have you seen that movie before? Or did you just pick it randomly? Me? Yeah, I've seen it. Was Come it on. good? <laughs> It's not bad. <laughs> All right. Give me another second. <laughs> so, it comes down to this, Mike. It's this is it. Final destination. All right, this one's actually probably going to be a pretty easy one. So you two get to fight over the death for it. I'm going to go with one of the two creators for a uh, show. TV show, okay. David S. Goyer. G-O-Y-E-R. Know him. Does some good stuff. There's a couple shows. I don't want to I don't want to fucking ruin it, so. I know. <laughs> um, Somebody just ripped ass. You're welcome, everybody. <laughs> was not me. This is a TV show. Yes. Mm. Flash forward. Wrong. Shit. Uh, you have an idea. There is but one thing it could really be. Yeah, and I'm gonna wait to hear one more thing just to confirm it. It is based off of a comic book. Constantine. Yes. That's all I needed. I was like, uh... Wait, that's a TV show? Yeah. It was. It's, it's canceled now. It already it canceled after one season. Wow. Which is unfortunate. It's actually fairly good. Was it? The movie's good. Can't yeah. The movie was really the movie's good. movie's great. All right, everybody. Man, that smells really bad, Jareth. <laughs> You're I, welcome. Really bad. <laughs> I didn't expect it to be as Thank bad God as Thank God that this is not brought to you by smell vision Yeah, exactly. Thank you to everybody for watching. That's going to wrap it up for episode 55 of the Flick Freak Podcast. All of our social medias. Why are you fucking laughing your ass off over there? Because <laughs> you're dying. It smells really bad. It's If you want to find us on all our social medias. Fuck! Jesus. You just got Fuck. it? Oh. Pussies. Go on. You know, working both in a hospital as and a janitor, I can say that I'm normally used to smells of such nature. But... Damn, Jareth. But um, is right. But is very right. If you want to find us on social media, you can find us on Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, YouTube, Patreon, and Instagram. All of those at forward slash Flick Freaks. 
We have a gaming channel where if you want to see Jareth and myself play the horror game, quote unquote, Soma, you can find that at forward slash Game Geeks. Not, the quotes are around horror. Yeah, not quote unquote Soma. around our horror. Yeah. Um, some other games coming up in a few weeks. I think in 10 days, we're going to be, yeah, it's 10 days. We're going to be playing Halo 5 Guardians. Yeah. Doing a walkthrough guide for the campaign of that. And tomorrow or tonight, we're going to be releasing episode one of Minecraft Story Mode, Telltale Games' newest venture. Very excited because it stars the likes of Patton Oswalt, who is always great in everything he does. The man is just so fucking funny. The game also stars... Uh, try to see what's his name. You have Patton Oswalt, uh, Brian Posen, who is funny as all get, uh, Ashley Johnson, Scott Porter, uh, Paul Rubens, aka Pee Wee Herman. <gasps> that was the word of the day. Pee Wee Herman. <laughs> and, uh, I forget his name. Oh, yeah, Corey Feldman's in it. I forget that. But, uh, what is his name? He was in the uh, first episode of, uh, or he was in first season of uh, Walking Dead Telltale Games. I don't know. Could be a lot of people. He was the main guy. Oh. I know the character's name sometimes, but not right now. It's going to drive me crazy if I don't know. Super, super good game, though. Oh, yeah, the first season of The Walking Dead. Takes a lot to elicit an emotional response from me, and that did. Oh, yeah, I got teary-eyed with that game. I punched a duck right in its stupid face. Uh, are you talking about Lee Everett? Yes. And he was also in The Wolf Among Us. Yes, he was. He is in this as well. Also, he was the voice of Hulu. Holy fuck, he is the voice of Hulu. Yep. The following thing is brought to you by. Yeah. So yeah, he's Holy in this, crap. even though he's not uh, listed in the cast. Yeah, he is in the game. Cool. So I'm very excited about the game. Looks to be a fun time for all. We will catch you guys in either our next video or in the next podcast. Until then, thank you for listening, and Godspeed. Bye. Oh, yeah.